from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. It can be found on page 1 in the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. Let us listen for God's word. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he said to them, then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. And when they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their gifts, their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Amen. Well, this summer while traveling in France, my friend and I were driving from Paris to Taizé, about four hours south of Paris. It's in the Burgundy region. And we were driving a 1980-something VW camper van, meaning we did not have GPS. <laughs> we had to navigate the old-fashioned way, and that was not even to use Google Maps. It was to use a paper map. So we made our way out of Paris and headed toward Taizé, or so we thought. About two hours into our journey, we saw a sign for Disneyland Paris. Now we thought for a moment and remembered that Disneyland Paris was west of Paris. <laughs> Somehow we had gone off course and circled back up to Paris. It probably didn't help that we were on unfamiliar territory and in a strange place. We were unfamiliar with the road signs that were posted. But also, if you've ever traveled with me, you know that this is not unusual to find yourself lost. <laughs> and I will admit, we did contemplate going to Disneyland Paris for a couple days instead of Taizé, but we decided against it. So after taking the next exit, and finally finding someone who knew where we had to go and how to get us there, using very basic French and very basic English and a lot of pointing, we were on our way to Taizé. We made it in eight hours. The four-hour journey took eight hours long. But the scenery was beautiful. And we went places we would never have gone had we not uh, gotten lost. And I'll tell you some other time about our trip back to Paris. <laughs> now, the Magi traveled on unfamiliar territory. They had no GPS. They had no Michelin maps. But they received a sign. And it was obvious to them what was happening. Now, they were not kings. I know we talk about them as kings, and we're going to sing a hymn in a moment called We Three Kings. But they weren't kings. They were astronomers, scientists, scholars. They looked for signs in the sky to tell them that the world was changing. And one day, one of them saw it with his very own eyes, a star, a new star, that meant something incredible was happening in the cosmos. I mean, can you imagine being the magi who first saw the star? After he double-checked and then triple-checked that what he saw was indeed what he thought he saw, he ran to get the others. He knew that they would understand the significance. He knew that they would know what this sign meant. He knew that this star would lead them to a king, the king. He knew the world was about to change. And so they prepared to journey a long way from home. We don't know where these magi came from. Matthew tells us from the east. They came from some country east of Israel. Now this is significant, actually, because it means 
that they were not Jewish, that they were Gentiles. And they are the first in the Gospel of Matthew to witness to who Jesus is when they worship him and offer him their gifts. The Magi are significant because Matthew wants us to know that Jesus came for the world, for everyone, not for certain people. So these Magi saw a sign, a star in the night sky, and that sign led them to Jesus. Well, it, it almost led them to Jesus. Actually, scholar Walter Brueggemann says, and any time I preach on this passage, I think I talk about this. Walter Brueggemann says they were actually nine miles off. They made it to Jerusalem, which is nine miles north of Bethlehem. It is possible that they went to Jerusalem because of the prophecy that Evan read from Isaiah that talks about kings coming to Jerusalem with camels and gold and frankincense. And when they get to Jerusalem, they confer with the king, Herod, who consults the biblical scholars of the day, and they advise that the Magi have it all wrong. They should have read what the prophet Micah was saying in chapter 5, but you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient of days. And so Herod, with his fingers crossed behind his back, tells the Magi to go to Bethlehem to look for this new king, and when they find him, send him word so that he may also go and worship him. So when they got to Bethlehem, they saw the sign. They saw the star over the place where Jesus was, and they entered the house and worshiped the child. Even nine miles off, they were able to find the baby Jesus. <laughs> now you may have heard the saying, not all who wander are lost. It actually comes from a puzzle poem from J.R.R. Tolkien from the Fellowship of the Ring. The entire poem is this, all that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. From the ashes a fire shall be woken, a light from the shadows shall spring. Renewed shall be blade that was broken, the crownless again shall be king. But it's that phrase, not all who wander are lost, has captured my imagination today. Because I think part, wandering is actually part of the process in finding Jesus in our lives. In the times when we feel off course or unsure of, of where we're headed, those are the times that are sacred. Wandering can be holy work. It can lead us to places we never imagined. And so this unfamiliar, this familiar story of the Magi visiting the Christ child has me wondering what helps us get to Jesus? What leads us to Jesus? Who or what leads you to Jesus? You know, we don't often get a sign like the Magi. We're not really attuned to looking at the night sky for a sign. So this question has me thinking and wondering if in our lives, in our relationship with Jesus, if it's about wandering, we find ourselves sometimes very close to Christ and sometimes very far away. So what do we learn about God and ourselves in our wandering? Now I have to leave open the possibility that sometimes in our wandering we see the signs in our lives that, that bring us closer to Jesus and at other times we miss those signs completely. I don't know if you saw the movie Bruce Almighty, but the main character in the, the film, there's a scene where he's driving along uh, the highway begging for a sign. And he's driving, and as he's driving, he's passing sign after sign. They're like road construction signs that are, are trying to tell him a message. Sometimes we're like that, I think. Sometimes we are so confused or angry or sad or wrapped up in our lives that we miss the signs that are right in front of us. Sometimes, sometimes we see the signs and we, like the Magi, end up nine miles off. We wander a bit 
before finding Jesus. But our story from Matthew today reassures us that we'll get back on track. As we begin this new year, it's a good time to think about the things that help us to have a deeper relationship with Jesus. We probably won't get a sign like in Bruce Almighty, or if you do, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> you know, we probably won't observe a star at its birth. We might wander a bit, but even given all that, we still have the opportunity to get closer to Jesus this year. As Evan said, we, we have our sacred scriptures that tell us of God's love for us in Jesus. We have our prayer lives, praying for ourselves and others. We have each other. And the opportunity to grow through studies and small groups. And we have to, the opportunity each week to worship this baby yet king and to offer our gifts in his service. The Magi saw a sign. They saw a sign in a star. And they found Jesus after wandering around for a bit. May we too look for the signs that point to Jesus. And may we treasure the ways that we wander, knowing that we can never, never be lost to him. Amen. <laughs>